There's a lot of rare enemies in Borderlands 3, and oftentimes they do drop certain legendary items. So, in this video, I'm going to be covering 10 rare enemy spawns that you can go to in Borderlands 3. Starting off this video today, we have the rare enemy known as Princess Tarantella II. Tarantella is a giant spider ant that has a chance to spawn in the Splinterlands region of Pandora. To find her, you will want to head over to the Chop Shop spawn point in the Splinterlands. You can find this located right here on the map, and this will be your spawn point for farming her. The creature's exact location will be shown on the map as well, and uh, here it is in comparison to the spawn point. Anyway, once here, you will want to head down to the spawn location. If you're lucky enough, Princess Tarantella should pop out of the ground right next to the big ramp. So if you don't see her come out, simply reload your game and try again until she eventually spawns. We did get a bit unlucky with this location as it took us a lot, and I mean a lot of tries to get her to spawn in. But once spawned in and killed, she has a chance to drop the legendary weapon known as the Hive. This will be her main legendary drop, but she can also drop random legendary loot as well. Anyway, the Hive is a returning rocket launcher from Borderlands 2, but in this game it's a legendary weapon and is manufactured by Torg instead of Maluan. The weapon itself also works in very similar ways to the Borderlands 2 version. It essentially shoots out a hive rocket that will travel a certain distance before stopping in midair. It will then begin to spin around and release a cluster of smaller rockets that will home in on any enemies nearby. The weapon itself has decent stats across the board, consumes 4 ammo per shot, has an additional effect of boosted splash damage and also has the red flavour text full of bees, which is exactly the same as its Borderlands 2 counterpart. As many of you will know, I'm a huge fan of all the easter eggs in Borderlands 3, and this next rare enemy known as Road Dog is a clear reference to the hero Roadhog from the game Overwatch. So much so that he even has the same hook he will throw at you, and also wears a similar mask to that of Roadhog as well. I'm a huge fan of Overwatch by the way, which is why I find this really cool. But anyway, to find this guy, you will want to head to the Splinterlands region of Pandora and he will spawn right here on the map. You will also want to head over to this location as this will be your spawn point for farming him. Anyway, once here, simply head over to this yellow container and this is where Road Dog has a chance to spawn. Ironically enough, once you have killed Road Dog, he has a chance to drop a legendary shotgun known as the Red Line. This weapon is manufactured by Torg, has two different firing modes being impact and sticky, is fully automatic and also has a charge up time. The charge up time isn't too much of a problem as the weapon does have a fast fire rate compared to other shotguns, but it does have quite a bit of recoil, so as long as you can control the damn thing, it can put out quite a bit of damage. It also offers a boost to splash damage, consumes two ammo per shot, and also has the red text, I live my life a quarter mag at a time which is a play on words and a reference to a scene in the movie Fast and Furious. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. For the next spot on this list, and also a reference to the Demogorgon from Stranger Things, we have the Demo Skagen. I'm a fan of Stranger Things, so it's pretty awesome to see this easter egg in the game, but to find the Demo Skagen, you will want to head to the Droughts region on Pandora. You can find him located right here on the map alongside the new use station you will want to go to to farm this guy. Now the cool thing about this spot is that multiple demo skagans have a chance to spawn in, and each one of those have a chance to drop a legendary item. At this current time, from multiple attempts of farming these guys, I don't know if they drop a specific legendary item. Every time we farmed here, they seem to drop something different each time, so if you do know a specific legendary the demo skagan drops, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Coming up next, and also a reference to Dwarf Fortress, we have Eurist Muck Enforcer. Now this guy has a chance to drop a weapon known as the Masterwork Crossbow, which is a legendary Hyperion Sniper. To find Eurist, you want to be on the planet of Promethea, and you'll need to go to the Electro City region. From there, you want to head over to this location on the map, just for reference, you can see the spawn point to this location as well. And once here, you'll want to head down into the tunnels. About midway through the tunnels, you should notice a door to your right, and this is where Eurist has a chance to spawn. Again, once killed, he does have a chance to drop the Masterwork Crossbow, which is a unique sniper that shoots one dart at a time 
in a crossbow-like style. It has the red flavor text, all crafts dwarf ship is of the highest quality, and also offers additional boosts to weapon damage, critical hit damage, weapon shield capacity, weapon accuracy, and weapon fire rate. But even with all of those additional effects, the weapon really isn't that good. The fact that it only shoots out one shot and also has a huge drop off range doesn't really make it a viable weapon for general use, but it's definitely one to pick up if you're one of the people out there who likes collecting all of the legendary weapons. Our Dragon Jr. is a rare enemy that has a chance to spawn in the Jacob's Estate region of Eden 6. I also believe this is a reference to a certain wrestler I think, I'm not entirely sure, but if you head over to this location on the map, this is where he has a chance to spawn. You will also want to go to this new U station as this is where your spawn point will be for farming this guy. And once you're here, the man himself should walk straight out from underneath the waterfall if you did manage to get him to spawn in. Anyway, once spawned in and killed, Aldrakan Jr. has a chance to drop a legendary artifact known as Unleash the Dragon. This artifact gives you the ability to have a 100% chance to ignite enemies upon sliding, using your ground slam, and also using your melee attacks on enemies. It also offers bonuses to incendiary damage overall, and also incendiary resistance as well. Overall, it's a pretty cool legendary artifact to obtain. Coming up next, we have the rare enemy known as the Unstoppable. The Unstoppable is a unique Goliath that has a chance to spawn in the Abermeyer region of Eden 6. If you head over to this exact location on the map, this will be your spawn point for farming him, and the guy himself will spawn in this exact area as well. Once killed, he has a chance to drop the legendary shield known as the Band of Sitarak, which is a low capacity shield with an extremely high recharge rate making this a pretty good shield to pick up, especially for you Moe's players out there. The shield itself also offers primary boost to weapon damage and max health, but depending on the variant you get, it can also boost your weapon fire rate. The spawn point slash new use station for this location is also very close to the unstoppable, so it shouldn't be too difficult to farm this guy. Next up, and also a reference to the AI companion Ghost from Destiny, we have Dinklebot. Now Dinklebot has a chance to drop a unique item called Lootograms, which can be turned into Crazy Earl on Sanctuary 3. Once those Lootograms have been turned in, Crazy Earl can spit out a weapon for you, and if you're lucky enough, the weapons he drops can sometimes be legendary weapons. I've seen people getting great weapons such as the Butcher's Shotgun and Lucian's Call from here, so it may be worth farming if you're looking to increase your arsenal. Anyway, to find Dinklebot, you'll want to head to the Skywar region of Promethea and head over to this location on the map. This is the new U station you'll want to go to in order to farm this guy, and Dinklebot himself will spawn exactly in this location. If you head over there, he should pop out from the garbage pile in the corner of the giant doorway, and again, once killed, he should drop a lootogram for you. I would suggest if you're looking to farm this guy, you go all in and farm for a bunch of the lootograms before turning them into Crazy Earl, as that way you'll increase your chances of getting a legendary weapon from him. Returning from Borderlands 2, we have the rare enemy known as Rackman. This is a guy who I did feature in my recent top 10 cool legendary weapon locations video, but he is a rare enemy and suits this list perfectly. Rackman himself is also a reference to the DC comic superhero Batman, and also resides in a bat-like cave called the Rack Cave. To find this guy, you will first want to head over to the Carnivora region on the planet of Pandora. Once here, you will want to head over to this location on the map, as this will be your spawn point for farming him. It's also here where you can tell if Rackman himself has spawned in. If you look into the sky in this area, you may notice a huge bat-like symbol. This is the symbol for Rackman, and this is how you can tell that he has spawned in your game. Anyway, once you have seen that symbol, you now want to head over to the Rack Cave. This will be located right here on the map, and once you're inside, Rackman should spawn straight out of the doorway and it's here where you have a chance to obtain a legendary pistol called the Night Flyer. I've already done a breakdown of this weapon in one of my previous videos, so if you want to check that out and see what the weapon does, I'll leave a link in the description below. Coming up next, we have the enemy known as Maxi Trillion. Maxi Trillion has a chance to spawn in the Voracious Canopy region of Eden 6. 
he will be located right here on the map and the spawn point you want to go to to farm this guy will be right above where you would normally fight Genevieve, who is a boss fight you naturally come across in the story. Anyway, once here, simply head over to the location and if you're lucky enough, Maxi Trillium will spawn and he has a chance to drop a legendary shotgun known as the Horizon. The Horizon is a TDO shotgun that has the unique ability that when thrown will essentially turn into a portable target that will home in on the enemy and explode. But you can also shoot that portable target to create a singularity that will suck enemies in and explode as well, making this a pretty damn weird gun to say the least. The red flavor text for this weapon is you can't leave, she won't let you, which alongside the name of the weapon is a reference to the sci-fi horror movie Event Horizon. Additionally, the weapon also offers boosted weapon damage and also comes with a weapon zoom. And for the final spot on the list, we have the rare enemies known as Wick and Warty, which is a clear reference to the TV show Rick and Morty. I'm sure a lot of you guys already watch Rick and Morty, so it's really cool to see these guys in the game. And what's even cooler is the fact that they sound and even look similar to that of Rick and Morty as well. Anyway, to find these guys, you'll want to go to the Electricity region of Promethea. Once here, you'll want to head to this location on the map, and it's here where Wick and Warty has a chance to spawn. Upon fighting them, you'll notice that Warty is very easy to kill. But Wick, on the other hand, will ironically keep teleporting around, so you'll have to hunt him down a bit, to kill him. Anyway, once you have killed Wig, he has a chance to drop the redundant Savvy Feebert, which is a legendary Hyperion shotgun. The weapon itself is actually pretty decent. It has decent stats across the board, with additional effects of boosted critical hit damage, weapon damage, weapon shield capacity, and weapon accuracy. And also, because it's Hyperion, it has a shield on the gun when aiming down sights that can reflect bullets when hit. Overall, the easter egg behind these guys is awesome and the weapon is actually pretty decent. And that's pretty much it for the video. If you enjoyed the video today, be sure to leave a like down below. It's always greatly appreciated on the channel. And by the way, I'll also be doing a part 2 to this video very soon. So subscribe if you're into these kind of top 10 listicle videos. Other than that, hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.